Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Today, we are making this gorgeous, giant granny square blanket. In this easy to follow step-by-step -step crochet tutorial, I show you how to crochet this fabulous granny square blanket. We also finish off our blanket with a really nice last row that prevents your blanket from stretching and getting all loose. Plus, it is a bit of a rectangle, so it is a lot more practical than a regular square and just as easy to do. I show you how to start and have a really great solid center. If English isn't your first language, you can click this gear on the video and scroll through to find your preferred dialect. And if you want to follow along with a written pattern, all of my patterns are available on my website, secretyarnery.com. And you don't have to worry about being able to read a pattern. All of my patterns are written in plain English, just like I was sitting there right beside you. I am using Saver from Ice Yarns for my giant granny square blanket. This is a four weight worsted acrylic. It is 100% Draylon, which means it's a premium acrylic. It is very, very soft and lovely to work with. The finished size of my blanket is 50 inches by 58 inches or 127 centimeters by 147 centimeters. And for my size blanket, I used six and a half of these skeins of yarn, which is 2,145 meters. I am using a seven millimeter crochet hook with my yarn. If you are new to crochet, you can also use stitch markers. You will also need a needle for sewing in your ends and a pair of scissors. Here are the timestamps. You can jump back in to where you left off and let's get started. If you are intermediate, just grab one stitch marker. If you are experienced, you don't even have to worry about those stitch markers. Go ahead and grab your yarn, and you're gonna start with a long enough tail, so about 12 inches of a tail. Go ahead and make a slip knot any which way you normally do. Shrink that down and pop it on to your hook. Go ahead and chain 14. One, two, three, 12, 13, and 14. And now we're gonna go in to the third chain from our hook. So to count your chains, you can just look at these pretty little Vs, these V stitches right here, these V chains, and we can just count our loops. So there is one, here is two, and here is number three. We're just gonna go into this chain right here. It doesn't matter if you have one loop on your hook or two, because we're gonna work on both sides of our chain anyway. So I'm just gonna go with this one loop on my hook. And we're gonna wrap our yarn and go into that third chain with two double crochets. So there is one and two. just like that, and chain two. One and two. Now into our next chain, right here, we're gonna go in and make three double crochets into the next chain. So wrap your yarn and three double crochets into the next chain. There is one, two, and three. And now we're gonna go ahead and use one of our stitch markers, not our special one, just a regular stitch marker. And we're just gonna put it into that chain two space just to mark our corner. So that is the first corner that we have done. Now we're gonna skip two chains. So skipping one and two, we're gonna work into the third right here. So wrap your yarn and into the third chain three double crochets. One, two, and three. We're gonna skip two chains again. So skipping one and two, we're gonna go into number three right here. So into the third chain, three double crochets. One, two, 
2 and 3. If I'm going too fast, you can hit that gear icon on the video and slow me down, or if I'm too slow, you can also speed me up. Now we're going to skip two chains again, so skipping 1 and 2, working in to the third right here. We're going to do three double crochets into that third chain, three double crochets, one, two, and three, chain two, one, and two, and now into that very last chain, Right here, we're going to do three double crochets. You can bring this tail forward so we can work over it a little bit. Wrap your yarn into that last chain, three double crochets. One, two, and three. Now into that chain two space, Go ahead and pop in a regular stitch marker, just to mark our corners. Chain two again, one and two, and now into this next chain, right where we did these other sets of three, we're gonna go into the same chain and do three double crochets. So we're gonna mirror whatever we did on the first side of our chain, we're gonna do it on the second side, working our way back. So into that same chain where we started our double crochets, we're going to do three double crochets. So into that same chain, there is one, two, and three. And go ahead, that chain two space is also going to get a stitch marker. Just so when you're working around, and if you are brand new to crochet, you can recognize that this is a corner space. So each of our corner spaces now have a stitch marker in them. Are you enjoying this tutorial? Go ahead and hit this button under this video right now so you don't miss out on any more quick and easy, fun tutorials just like this. So now look for the next chain where we did our double crochets, and we're gonna work into the very same chain doing the very same thing. So three double crochets into that next ch chain that has stitches in it. So there is two and three. Now into the next chain right here, three double crochets, and we're also gonna do three double crochets into that next chain. So each of the stitches, or each of the chains that has stitches, we're gonna do stitches into the same chain. So three double crochets into that next chain that has stitches in it. So there's two and three, and into the next chain that has stitches in it. Three double crochets. One, two, and three. So that finishes our first row. We just have to join. I'm gonna continue with the same yarn. So this is how you join and continue. To join and continue, chain one, and then into the top of our chain, just get yourself a little unfolded, you can see the top of our chain three right here. We're gonna make a single crochet to join. So into the top of our chain three, one single crochet to join. And that finishes round one. To start round two, chain three, one, two, three, turn your work. Now I like to turn my work just so I don't have a right side and a wrong side of my blanket. Both sides look great. It also stops your blanket from curling up on the edge, so I definitely prefer to turn my work, especially if I'm changing colors, because the center will slowly migrate to the side, actually where your hook is. So turning your work is a great thing. 
into this same corner space, we're going to start with two double crochets. So wrap your yarn and two double crochets into that same corner space. And now we're going to grab our special stitch marker and we're going to pop it right into that space. Just so we know that that is our corner space where we're going to join and step up to the next round. Now you can kind of wiggle your fingers and find these spaces in between our shells or sets of three double crochets. That is where we're going to be working for this round in between all of those sets of stitches. So we're going to be starting right here and we're going to do three double crochets into that space. So just into the space, three double crochets. One, two, and three and into the next space right over here, three double crochets. One, two, and three. And into the next space between those stitches, three double crochets. One, two, and three. And now we are where our stitch marker is or in our corner if you are familiar with crochet. So into this corner space where our stitch marker is, we are going to do a corner. So corners always get corners and corners are always three double crochets, chain two and three double crochets. So here is two and three. If that stitch marker gets in your way, you can pop it out. And if you need more space to get your stitches lying side by side, go ahead and grab your stitches, grab your chain, and just pull your stitches forward. That'll give you more space in that corner for your stitches to lie down nice and flat side by side. Chain two, one and two, and three more double crochets into that same corner space. One, two, and three. So that finishes our corner. Now I'm going to pop that stitch marker up into that new chain two space we just made. Just like that. And that's how you can keep track of your corners if you are new to crochet. Our next corner also has a stitch marker, so we're also going to do a corner. So corners get corners. Corners, three double crochets, chain two, and three double crochets. Now you can pause the video if I'm going too fast. There's our three double crochets, our chain two, and three more double crochets into that same corner space. There's one, two, and three. Move that stitch marker up if you are using stitch markers into the next space and each space along the side. We're going to do three double crochets into each of these spaces. So into the next space, three double crochets. There's two and three. Into the next space, three double crochets. One, two, and three, and into the next space, three double crochets. One, two, and three. Into the next corner, we're going to do a corner, three double crochets, chain two, and three double crochets. So there is two, three, chain two, slide those stitches back if you need some more room, and three double crochets into that same corner space. There's one, two, and three. Go ahead and move that stitch marker up if you are using them. 
And now we are at our special stitch marker. That means this is the corner where we are going to join and step up. And you can see if we didn't put that stitch marker in and if you're new to crochet, this could look just like a space along the side and you'll be looking for your corner over here. So that's why we pop that stitch marker in. So into that space, we're gonna finish up our round. So three double crochets, one, two, and three. And now I'm gonna show you how to join and end, or join and change colors. To join and change colors, we're gonna end with a chain two, one, and two, and we're going to slip stitch into the top of that chain to join. So into the top of that chain three, we're gonna slip stitch to join. So pop your hook in, slip stitch to join, and chain one to secure your yarn. Cut your yarn, leaving a long enough tail to sew in with a needle later. Pull your hook up and your yarn through, and snug that down to secure. You can pop your stitch markers out, especially if you can see your corners now. It's a little bit easier to tell that that is a corner. So you can pop your three stitch markers out and you can still use one to mark your beginning corner. But when we're changing colors, you're gonna see where that is anyway. But when you need to mark your corner, just keep a stitch marker handy. So now I'm gonna show you how to fix this center so you don't have these big loops, just one strand of yarn holding your blanket together. We're gonna to use our tail to fix that. So this is how to sew in your tail. To sew in your tail, go ahead and thread your needle. I like these sharp tip needles. They go through the fibers instead of around them, so they are really, really great. These are linked in the description box down below. And we're just gonna go through, if you look at your starting chain, one side is solid, we, that has the two strands, and our starting side where we just went into that one loop, it's a little bit thin. Can you see there's just that one strand? So we wanna follow that strand all the way up so that it gets strengthened on the skinny side. So there's gonna be a thick side, there's gonna be a skinny side. We're gonna sew in our tail just underneath those loops on the skinny side just to help strengthen up that one side of our blanket. And then grab some yarn, just kind of loop it through that chain, just like you normally would if it was a piece of, or if it was yarn going through the stitches. And then in the center fat part of the next set, see, already looks great. Grabbing a little loop from that chain, because we want to pin down that side, following our chain up and through the next set of double crochets. Back into that chain. See how that's working out? Really great through our chain and through the last set of three double crochets. There we go. You wanna make sure you're not pulling it too tight. You don't want one side of your um, granny square thinner than the other. That's still one strand right up there at the top. So I'm gonna go through those three and back down this first set on the other side. So that's why we left a little bit of a longer tail so we don't have to struggle to get all this stitched in. And then I'm just gonna go back the opposite direction, just through the fat part of all those stitches. And now I can cut my yarn. And that is how we get the center starting of our rectangle, nice and even and strong and balanced out. So now we are ready to join a new color of yarn. To join a new color of yarn, 
flip your work. So we want to make sure where we're starting into the back. We want to flip each row. So just look for these pretty V's around the edge of your work. Those nice V's. You, that's what you want to be looking for. That is the front or that's the top of your work. If you are working into the back, you just see these little holes, these little dimples all the way along the top. So we want to be working into the side that has these dimples, not the side that has this pretty finished edge. So make sure you're working in to the dimple side. And we want to find a corner, not where we have just finished our yarn. So any other corner is fine. Just pop your hook in to that corner space. So loop of your next color on your hook, bring it through, and slip stitch with both strands to join and drop your tail. We can hold it along the side of our work for the next two stitches. Chain two, one and two. Now this counts as our first double crochet, but if you join your yarn in a different way, chain three and into the same space, two double crochets. One and two. Drop your tail and now into each space along the side, each of these spaces, we're going to do three double crochets into each. So each of these spaces is going to get three double crochets. So into the first space, three double crochets, one, two, and three, and into the next space three double crochets. One, two, and three. So now you can pause the video and keep working along. Three double crochets into each space along the side and I will meet you when we get to our corner. Wondering if anybody else is crocheting in your neighborhood? Join our Friday Live Chats. It's a place where crocheters and knitters from all over the world come to connect with each other and belong. And yes, you will belong too. See you Friday. When you get to your corner, you can work over your tail. We'll still have to sew it in later, but at least we can work over it for our corner stitches. So into our corner, we're going to do a corner. Corners, three double crochets, chain two, and three double crochets. So there's one, two, three. Remember, you can always slide your stitches back if you need some more room. Chain two, one and two, and three double crochets into that same space just to finish off our corner. There's two, and here is three. Now we have one space along the side. So three double crochets into the space along the side. One, two, and three. So pause the video, keep working along. Corners, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. Each space along the side, three double crochets. And I'll meet you when we get back to where we started. When you get back to where we started, three double crochets into that same corner space. And you can see why we don't need a stitch marker for this round. Three double crochets into that corner space. One, two, and three. And now we're gonna join and continue. So to join and continue, chain one, and we're going to do one single crochet right here, just into the top of that chain, into the top of our chain three. One single crochet to join. Just like that. And now go ahead and mark this corner. We want to put that stitch marker in because we don't want to lose track of it. So chain three, one, two, three, and turn your work. And now you'll keep going. 
starting with your two double crochets into that same space and three double crochets into each space along the sides and corners, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. You can always check the timestamps if you want to join and continue or you want to join and end. And our rows are gonna be the same for the entire giant granny square blanket. So now I can pause the video and keep working along. If you want your blanket to be the same as mine, I started with our two rows of the same color. And then after that, that's the same dimension as four rows going on. So afterwards, I did four rows of each color all the way for the rest of my blanket. So that's how I did it. But of course, you can change your yarn color as often as you like. So pause the video, get your giant granny square blanket as giant as you like, and I'll meet you when it is a size that you like. When your blanket is the size you want it to be, I have just joined, just with my chain one and single crochet, we're gonna do one extra row. So I've done my four rows and now we're just gonna edge in single crochet. So join with the chain one and single crochet to join and chain one, just to get a little bit of height and turn your work. So one single crochet into the space and one single crochet into each of the first two stitches. So one single crochet into the first stitch and one single crochet into the second. So one single crochet and one single crochet and now chain one. Now into our next set of three, we're gonna do one single crochet into the first two. So there's one and two so one single crochet into each of the first two stitches and chain one. Jumping over to your next set of three, one single crochet into each of the first two stitches. So one single crochet and one single crochet and chain one. Skipping to your next set of three, one single crochet one single crochet and chain one. So that keeps our stitch count the same, but it also helps our blanket not stretch out. Those chains are just a little bit smaller than a single crochet and single crochets are a little bit smaller than a double crochet or have less stretch. So that'll end our blanket really nice, not too tight, but not too loose. So you can pause the video and keep working along. One single crochet into each of the first two stitches and then chain one and skip over to the next set of three all the way along the edge of your blanket and I will meet you when we get to the first corner. When you get to your corner space, I've done my two single crochets and chain one. So now into our corner space, we're gonna do one single crochet chain two, one and two, rotate your work and one more single crochet into that same corner. Just like that. And now starting right in our very first stitch, one single crochet into the first, one single crochet into the second, chain one and jump over to your next set of three. So you can pause the video and keep working around one single crochet into each of the two first two stitches and a chain one. When you get back to where your stitch marker is, just pop it out, we're done with it now. And I've done my two single crochets and chain one. Now we're gonna work right into that corner with our one single crochet. And I'm gonna show you how to join with an invisible join. If you wanted to do a slip stitch, then you would just do your chain two and slip stitch over into that very first stitch we did. So slip stitch and then chain one to secure your yarn. You will end up with a little bit of a bump on the one side. So I'm gonna join in a different way. I'm gonna show you how to do an invisible join. So this is how you join with an invisible join. Chain two, one, 
and two. And now we're gonna cut our yarn without joining. So cut your yarn, pull your hook up and your yarn through. Grab your needle and just thread it. And now we're gonna look for that very first stitch. So the same spot where we would be slip stitching right into that first single crochet we made, two loops of that V on the top of our hook. Just go ahead and pop your needle in and keep an eye on where your yarn is coming from. So it's coming from this circle right here, that loop. We're gonna be working right back down into the same loop. So pop your needle back down right into that same spot where the yarn came from. And now shrink it up so it looks like a regular stitch. Oops, I went through that. Just like that, and now go ahead and sew in your tail. So I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I'm waiting for you in that video right there, and stay hooked.